Hi everyone, welcome to episode 9. A lot of horses to go through from the 28th of December to the 2nd of January. But before I get on to all that, can I just wish everyone who watches these videos a very happy and healthy 2024 to you and to your families. The main aim of the videos during this year will just be to produce the same content as I normally do, talking about the horses who go to Cheltenham. And if we can post another profit this year to go with the previous six years, it would be fantastic. It won't be easy. We're all seeing the markets and how tough they are and how they've moved so crazily over the past few days. You look at all the markets, they've moved a lot. They've been the odd favourite beaten. There've been horses who've enhanced their claims, but not that many really, and a lot of big favourites that have been beaten and are looking in real trouble for Cheltenham now. Races like the Ryanair look seriously up for grabs. The stairs, horses are starting to put their claims in now, but it's still very open. The novice events look extremely difficult at the moment with so many horses coming out and enhancing their claims, but they can't all win and uh, the markets are quite open but difficult and they're defensively priced as well. So we'll get on to all the horses who've run over the past six days, my assessment of them, which you won't all agree with, but I have to give my assessment. If you have seen a horse over the past few days that you think is going to win at Cheltenham and you've you know, put your money on and think the horse is value, then you can comment below. I can only give you my own assessment on these videos. So I'll get straight into the horses now. There was a golden half hour on the 28th, and we'll get on to them fairly soon. But Jade de Grugy came out early at Leopardstown and was extremely impressive and certainly looks like she could be Willie Mallon's contender for the Mayor's Novice. A very, very nice first performance and certainly a rival for Brighter Days Ahead and Dysart Enos. This was a lovely introduction and a good performance. And she is one who's going to go into that market, where I fancy only by night. But we did expect Willie Mullins to certainly introduce one or two into this market. And she definitely seems like she's one of those. Fuck to file won the beginner's chase and looked really, really good. After being defeated by American Mike, he's rolled straight back. And he really does look a prospect for the Brown Advisory, but or the Turners. But no matter where you look, there are horses for both of these races everywhere. Where does he fit in McCorbett's Cross even? His own stable have got Gaelic Warrior, who we'll talk about in a while, for the Turners. It really is so difficult to pinpoint where these novices could go in both the novice hurdles and the novice chases. It's just almost impossible as much as you like factor file you can almost over the christmas period see daily other rivals for races which that horse may run in a lot of po people said that irish point wasn't a stairs hurdle horse after this race because it was run at a slow pace but i thought his finishing effort was superb. I would see him, certainly. I actually think he's a better stairs hurdle prospect than Tehupu, even if they want to make Tehupu their number one. For me, Irish Point would be the number one. Uh, Rob Kerr horse for the stairs hurdle. <clears throat> That's purely my opinion, but I was very impressed with Irish Point's performance here. Now, it could be that this was run so slowly that it was like a two-mile four race, but I was impressed. I certainly would be wanting this horse to run in the stairs hurdle and I think he'd give a really good account of himself and especially as they do now have an ideal horse for entry in Bob Ollinger. So I, I think Irish Point should be seriously considered for the stairs hurdle. Galloping de Champs was imperious. This was an outstanding performance from him. And really, it's hard to see where the dangers are in the gold cap for this horse. 
he was just well this was the, one of his best performances ever perhaps his best performance ever and for backers of Jerry Colomb I just don't know how you beat this horse on his day if he turns up on a going day I don't see any horse getting near him of course he could get injured before the race of course he could have problems but if not, it's hard to see how Galpin Deschamps was beaten in the gold cap. I know Faster Slow didn't run in this race, but I cannot see any horse that could have lived with him on this performance. He was really, really good. And the other horse on the day was at Limerick, was Gaelic Warrior, and he was breathtaking as well. It's hard to see him beaten in the Turners, but he does have quirks. He could jump right at Cheltenham. He's been beaten twice at Cheltenham in the last two festivals. He's possibly not as bomb-proof as Galloping the Champs, but he looked a really good horse, beating a decent field. It was quite funny for me to see the disagreement between Patrick Mullins and Danny Mullins after the race. And I, for me, Patrick's at fault um, telling people where they can go on the racetrack. But as for the performance, to beat Illiter Tom on American Mike so easily was some performance. And I thought on the day, the, the half hour we had with Irish Point, Galloping the Champs and Gaelic Warrior, was frightening to see three horses of that class win so easily, all within about 35, 40 minutes of each other. Really superb performances from them all. And hard to say that they wouldn't all win at Cheltenham but of course Irish Point is the number two for the owner in the race and Gaelic Warrior has that tendency to jump right and has been beaten at Cheltenham before. On the 29th Bally Byrne won as he liked. Decent field, Cletus Pulo was in here and he's just routed them all. The only problem you have with a horse like Bally Byrne is so many good horses in his yard even. They still have to run El Atlantique. They still have to run Chapeau de Soy. You've also got the likes of Firefox. Where do all these horses fit into the jigsaw? Impossible for anyone to know. And therefore impossible to be going in on horses like these. Because you don't even know that Bally Byrne may not switch back to the Supreme. It's just too difficult at the moment in the nervous hurdles. Grange Clear West. I said after his last win that he needs to back this up, and he did this time. He was really good beating Corbett's Cross. This was a good performance. Now, I did think that Corbett's Cross was ridden slightly as if he was a wonder horse, and it looked like Mark Walsh thought, I'm going to pick these leaders up whenever I want. And, of course, then he made a mistake at the second last, which put him on the back foot. But I don't think he'd have won anyway. And I think... I think he was just ridden a little bit too confidently and he could never get to the leader. I thought Grange Clare West was really good, but like I've already spoken about with Fact to File, so many good horses in this Brown Advisory and it's hard to say where they all go. Stateman, I said after Imperi Pass was beaten by Tehupu, I wasn't convinced about him and I thought Stateman was a better horse than him. Stateman's won again here. And Perry Pass's jumping was again a bit ragged. Talk of that horse now going up to the stairs. Hurdle division. Stateman was good here. They say last year he wasn't quite right for the champion hurdle. But I don't believe that. I, I just think Constitution Hill takes horses out of their comfort zone. He'll still have to go for the champion hurdle, Stateman. And he'll have a reasonable chance. But I don't think that he'll match um, Constitution Hill when it comes to the crunch. And I think he'll just play for second again this year. In the bumper, Jalon de Dury, he won the race named after Gordon Elliott's uncle last time out. And this time he's beaten Redemption Day. Gordon has said he's going to go to the champion bumper, so you have to respect that view. He's into six to one now for the champion bumper. And it has to be said at the moment, it does look like Elliot seems to hold the aces in the champion bumper. 
department, but that can all change very, very quickly. I'm sure Willie Mullins is going to have an ace to take out the pot pretty soon, but this was a good performance. Well, I would certainly not take six to one Jalan Duderiz, but he's looked a very nice horse in his two appearances. A few talking points from Saturday. How on earth can Jericho de Repine be seven to two, four to one for the Supreme? He's won nicely on both his appearances, but if you look at the calibre his horse he's beaten, and then you look at Far and Glory at 12, 14 to 1. You look at No Flies on Him, who won a really decent novice hurdle, and it's 33 to 1. And it just doesn't stack up, no matter how well Jericho de Ropine has won. It's not reflective of his price. And, and I sometimes think these JP horses are, are cut. All right, he's got Henderson in his camp, which... Henderson's won quite a lot of Supremes. And then you see the green and gold, and, he, and he's priced on that. He's not priced on his form because beating these horses is nowhere near the quality of what he's going to need to beat in March. It's simply not reflective of what he's done. It's reflective of his potential. But I couldn't back this horse at 72 with stolen money. And he could well be the better the festival. But on what he's beaten and what he's done on the track, he simply can't back this horse. It's simply not good enough for him yet, and he's shown nothing. When he runs next, I don't know, but I mean, he's going to have to beat something surely before he goes to Cheltenham. He's not a battle hardened horse, and I don't know. I, I just can't see how this price is correct. But there, he will have his backers, but they won't include me at the moment. In the Charlo, Henderson had a big reverse here with Wilmount being extremely disappointing. He he didn't seem to run his race and reminds me of Jet Powered from last season. It was really, really disappointing to see this run. Now, Captain Teague's won and at points in the race, Captain Teague looked like he was going to run away with this. But they've all finished pretty legless. For me, I can't have Captain Teague for a Ballymore. Not after this run. He hasn't got away from his rivals. And that would worry me. So although it was a nice win. and It's it's good to see him reverse back to grade one form. I, I just... No, I can't have him for the... I can't have him for the Ballymore. He wouldn't be my bet. If he wins the Ballymore, I won't win on the race. But... As good a performance as it was, it's not for me. I said the race at Corbett's Cross, Ricard Bragg, Monty Starr and Nick Rocket ran in. Looked a good race and I think a lot of people thought that at the time. And Monty Starr, after that first outing, has come out and turned the tables on Ricard Bragg pretty readily as well. I thought he was quite good again. Monty Starr, he could be a national hunt chase Horse because it looks like the Bromhead's horses are going to be placed to try and achieve victories rather than run perhaps in the race that's more suitable for the horse. But either the National Hunt Chase or the Brown Advisory for this horse, he jumps really well. I liked him. I said he was a sort of possible Brown Advisory horse after his run last time out. I, I still think I would take this horse to Brown Advisory. He's, he's into about 14, 16 to 1 now. I think he's a lively outsider, but it's just such a hot race at the moment. It's hard to say that horses should go to that race, like I've talked about already with Factor File, Grange Clare West. You don't know about Corbett's Cross, but even Three Card Bragg could perhaps, you know, mould into this sort of horse. Sander Clagan, Stay Away Fay. It's just, just too difficult at the moment to be recommending a bet, but I liked Monty Starr's performance. Sir Gerhard, it was only two miles four. He's won nicely. He's gone back over hurdles. Whether he would truly see out three miles in a stairs hurdle is uh, up for debate, really. But he was good here, and he's you know he's resurrecting his career over hurdles after some poor attempts over obstacles. He he seems to be better over hurdles. 
And let's not forget he's won a champion bumper and he's won a Ballymore. So this is no forlorn hope for a stairs hurdle if he stays the distance. Up Fairy House yesterday, I will be by beat my trump card in what could be quite a good maiden hurdle. I, I was quite impressed with I will be by went by my trump card quite nicely and I had expected my trump card to enhance his Cheltenham claims in this race and he didn't and he was well beaten as well so I think a horse that maybe some people won't talk about will be this I will be by but I think he could be quite good and it's a performance that may not be talked about by many but I, I like this performance this was a, a decent performance there was a big Cheltenham favourite beaten yesterday as well, uh, Allegori de Vasi for the Mayor's Chase was beaten by Rivier de Tell of Gordon Elliott's. Rivier de Tell jumped a bit better in this race than uh, Allegori de Vasi, who I'd never really taken to as a horse, was well beaten in the end. And now we have the favourite for the Mayor's Chase being Dino Blue, who for me is still a suspect steer. Now, hopefully Gordon Elliott has got a better horse than Rivier de Tell at home in Halka du Tabet. And if he does, then I think she will have a decent chance in the Mare's Chase. Uh, and I'm really hoping that she is the horse for the Mare's Chase because I was really delighted with her debut. Liked her and, and talked her up very, very much after her debut. And I'm hoping that she might be slightly better than Rivier de Tell. And if she is... I think she is a horse that will truly stay out the two mile four. And I think she'll give Dino Blue and all good at Divasi a lot to think about. But if this is Rivier de Tell coming back to form, then she's not out of the picture for the Mayor's Chase. But I'm hoping that this could be a big form boost for Halka de Tuber. Not as a form boost, but a boost to uh, Halka de Tuber's chances of a Mayor's Chase because if she's a better horse at home at Calantra, then hopefully um you know she'll go there with a decent chance come March. Over at uh final horse to talk about is the other horse out of this big uh beginner's chase and that was Nick Rocket who won over two miles five. Now a lot of people talking about this horse for National Hunt Chase but he still has to run over three miles to even qualify for the race so Probably tell you a lot about where he may go at Cheltenham when he runs next because he has to run over three miles to get qualified. He's run over two miles five twice now. So Nick Rocket, although quite short now, about 10, 12 to 1 for the National Hunt Chase, isn't actually qualified for the race as we stand at the moment. At Tremor, it was disappointing to see Classic Getaway not win. When it looked like coming to two out, he was going to win very easily. It's a horse who I can't seem to get right at all. He hasn't backed up his uh, victory first time out. I was really disappointed that he couldn't tuck away Jungle Boogie. and he's He's been done on the line, but it was disappointing to see him beaten in truth because this wasn't a great race. And I thought he would win convincingly and he's ended up being beaten in the photo finish by Jungle Boogie who's not a bad horse it's just I don't think the form's going to amount to what I hoped it would amount to. Bob Ollinger well, this is the second time he's won this season and people said could he back it up well he has a nice performance as well. Rob Cooter seemed to be placing the horses a lot better this season and it could be that this is a entry hurdle horse they're talking about maybe dropping back to the champion hurdle. I can't see him beating Constitution Hill, but he's certainly getting back on track and, and looking a far better horse than he did when he was over fences. So it's good to see Bob Bollinger back. Final horse to talk about is Stage Star, who just didn't jump well and last time out looked like a Ryanair horse. I still think he is. He was lumping a lot of weight. He didn't really run that well in truth. I wouldn't give up on him. I think if you want to back him, I would just put a line through this and take the better price. 
and trusting Nichols to get him back. I don't think this was his running. I think he was praying for the party power, which he won. And I would like to think Nichols would get him back further eye in air. I can't say I was truly impressed with Alaho's finishing effort, even though it was over three miles in the King George. So I think the Ryanair looks a, a race that could be up for grabs this season. In truth, over Christmas, I hope to learn a lot and think maybe the waters would be clearer for a lot of the Cheltenham races. And maybe in Marine National's case, people would think that the article looks a bit clearer. But in truth, I think we've muddied the waters even further. I can't make head nor tail of any of the novice hurdles or the novice chases at the moment. They look very difficult, in all honesty. Uh, like, there's so many horses still with chances. And I think you have to have a, a very firm opinion to be thinking that certain horses are going to win the Supreme, the Ballymore, the Albert Bartlett, the Arkell, the the Brown or the Turners. Like, people will back Jericho to rip an A, but what about the horses who were beaten over Christmas, like Murizur West, like Daddy Longlegs, Dick? down memory lane I, I still think a lot of those horses are, have chances in the supreme far and glory fell king of kingsfield's enhanced his claim it's it's too difficult you, you've got horses who didn't run over christmas still in line for the ballymore and albert bartlett and then you've got the conundrum of the arkle if horses don't want to go against marine national they may have to go against gaelic warrior and there are a lot of good horses in those divisions that are going to have to go somewhere at Cheltenham. And then you've got a lot of good staying novice chasers who, if they have to avoid horses in the Brown Advisory, they're going to have to go to the National Hunt Chase. But there are so many of those, like four out of one race, Corbett's Cross, Three Card Bragg, Nick Rocket and Monty Starr. And, and they're not the only ones you've got, the fact of files. American Mike, if he comes back to form, all these sort of horses added to stay away Fay, Hermes all in, and it just becomes a bit of a mess until you can sort of really nail your colours to one. And even if you do, you don't know for sure they're going to that race or where something's going to come out of left field and knock your bet or put your bet out to odds that you just don't want to be betting them up. Like, you could quite easily back a horse at 8 to 1 just now and find something runs in two weeks' time that's into 3 to 1 favourite and you're sitting on an 8 to 1 bet which you possibly think is 12 to 1 now. So, yes, very, very muddy waters for Cheltenham at the moment. I'm glad I don't have an anti-post book and I know that there will be people that are on 33 to 1 shots that are 6 to 1 now. And even if they've made 10 selections, if that 33 to 1 shot wins, they're going to be in really good shape. But as we saw last year, there was people going into Cheltenham were really good positions on, say, three or four horses. And all three of them have been beaten or four of them have been beaten. And then it's not just the losses that you've incurred on those three or four. It's the losses on the others, which those three or four were, were holding up by looking like good bets that are going to be gone. So for me... Having a blank sheet on the videos isn't a bad thing at the moment. Nailed down, I couldn't nail, couldn't name one horse that I would like to buck for Cheltenham at the moment that I'd really be confident about. His serious value will contract in odds and has a good chance of winning. That's what I'm looking for. I've probably seen in my videos three of those that I would have said, yeah, I think they'll all contract in odds and they'll do well. I've probably seen five or six others which haven't contracted in odds or have gone out in odds or won't run for the races. So I think it's best to keep your powder dry. Just keep putting money into your Cheltenham pot. And finally, sooner or later, you'll see one that you really like. So anyway, thanks for watching the video today. No sponsors here. No gifts, no giveaways, no anti post selections. Just my honest opinion of what I see. Have you seen one over uh, Christmas that you think you would nail your colours to the mast? 
you can tell me why you think it's value, why you think it's going to come in and why you think it's going to win, because that's all the things I need. I need to think that it's going to come in in odds, that it's really good value. And I have to think it's going to win. And I, I'm finding them very scarce on the ground at the moment. People will see, say Marine National. I would say Blood Destiny. What about Gaelic Warrior going back in trip? That's less fences for him to jump right at if he's going to... So there's all those sort of options for horses and uh, for me it's just too difficult at the moment. So thanks for watching. There won't be much to review in the next couple of videos because a lot of the main horses for Cheltenham have been out over the past two to three weeks and I think until we get the Dublin Racing Festival it'll be slim pickings for the videos but perhaps we can go through the markets and see if there is something hiding in there which I haven't noticed at the moment. So thanks for watching. Have a good week. Bye for now.